But mine was full of ice cream, pizza, and wings. Um, no, we had a great Valentine's Day. Uh, we actually got to spend it with Marianne. Uh, so it was such a fun time. I hope that you guys had great Valentine's. Yes. That Jesus was a lot of your Valentine. He's all of our Valentine's. But, uh, you know, I was thinking, like, we're already in the middle of February. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I feel like the year has just started and has, like, ran ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so awesome that we have Cheska here tonight. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's really great. It's different being in person than being, yeah. being on Zoom. Uh, although we're grateful for Zoom and everybody on Zoom who is able to attend through there. Uh, but I'll be honest, being in the middle of February, the New Year's resolutions have kind of like faded a little bit, you know, we're, we're kind of out of our New Year's resolution phase, right? In the middle of February, that's when you show up to the gym and everybody's gone, right? Um, for a lot of us, we're in the middle of school and it's kind of grindy, right? Work, family, ministry, like things just, they don't stop. And tonight I do want to share a little, a few things that I have been learning. Okay. And I'll be honest, this time of the year, I can be tempted with a lot of things, right? I think especially, you know, being that it's the middle of February, I can think, okay, like, where are we headed? Mm, yeah. Where are we at? Yeah. Am I where I wanted to be yeah. now? Yeah. And if not, am I going to where I want to go? Mm, yeah. And so I think that a lot of fear can creep in. I can, I can be tempted with a lot of fear. Yeah. I can be tempted with discouragement yeah. when I don't see things that I wanted to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I think for women, we can really struggle with being tempted with anxiety. Yeah. And for Joey and me, I do want to share, you know, we've been working through many things. Uh, most of the married women know, uh, in particular, Cheska, I've been talking to her about being in a new stage of life, yeah. right? Joey yeah. and I have two awesome kiddos, yes. and they are incredible, but it's a new stage of life. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like my kids are different people every time they wake up. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just different people, they're new people. But, you know, we've, we're learning so much as parents, we're learning so much in the ministry, we're learning so much in our relationships with each other, in our marriage, uh, you know, and I think in particular, we're learning a lot in how to help people to not walk away from God. Right. Wow. And I think it can, it has been very easy for me to have the, or to struggle with the temptation of fixing my eyes on everything in front of me yeah. oh, instead yeah. of fixing my eyes yeah. on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm honest, I don't think I'm alone. Yeah. You know, I think, I think there can be a sense, there's a sense of tiredness oh. within the sisters. Okay. Oh. So my hope for tonight is that I can revitalize you and that we can leave here with a fire set in our hearts to do the will of God. Amen. The title of my lesson is Triumphant Through Temptation. Please turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. And you know, since we're talking about temptations... We are going to start in the beginning, where the temptation started, in Genesis chapter 3. Come on, Karen. And let me get an amen when everybody's there. Amen, sis. Amen, sis. All right, Genesis chapter 3. Come on. I'm going to start in verse 1. Come on. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband. Look at her trying to take care of Adam. Her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And you know, this is after God forms Adam, right? God gives Adam the command to not eat fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He says, you can eat from any tree here, any tree in the Garden of Eden, except for this one. But all the other ones are all yours. And it's so incredible because can you imagine being in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Probably the most beautiful place, right, that God created. I know some of us here love nature. I am not included in that, but I love that for you. I love that for you. But it's interesting, it's interesting here because we see Eve talking to a snake. She does eat the fruit that God commanded not to eat. And after this, you know, Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. Sin was introduced to the world and it was the fall of mankind. It was the worst thing ever. And I don't know about you, sisters, but I, I can kind of wonder sometimes, like, how did it get so bad so fast? Yeah. Yeah. Right? How did it go from prosperous to disastrous? Oh. I, want, I want us to take notice here that the very first mistake that Eve made wow. was that she listened to the snake. Yeah. Wow. Point number one. Is don't listen to the snake. Don't listen to the snake. You know what? It's interesting that the Bible mentions the snake as the craftiest animal of them all. The snake is crafty. And how was the snake crafty with Eve? We see that the serpent posed a question that made Eve second guess the word of God. Yeah. So first, he got Eve to doubt, right? God specifically said this, and the serpent was, did God really say that, though? He got Eve to doubt. Then he completely deceives her. He says the exact opposite of what God had told Adam. And then he tempts Eve by offering something that she would gain by eating the fruit. And in the same way for us, sisters, we have to understand that Satan is crafty. It is no different today. He is the same today as he was with Eve. I want to share a few scriptures and you can write them down uh, that, that show this. In John chapter 8, verse 44, it says that Satan speaks his native language when he lies. Yes. 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Wow. Revelation 12 says that Satan, or Satan deceives the whole world and leads them astray. And 2 Corinthians 11, 3, Paul says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, mm -hmm. your minds will be led astray. Wow. And sisters, I have to ask you tonight, have you been talking to the snake? Wow. Have you been listening to the snake? It's one thing to talk to the snake. It's another thing to listen yes. to it. <laughs> and I want to encourage us, right? What, what kind of thoughts are you having? Yeah. What kind of conversations are you having? Mm -hmm. Are they those of a snake? Amen. We need to make sure that we're not talking to, that we're not listening to a snake, because in the same way as Eve, Satan is going to try to deceive us yeah. and make us question the words of God, yeah. the words of God. And 
I want to share tonight that one of the greatest ways that we'll be triumphing over temptation is by not listening to the snake. Yeah. We know how it is, right? Yeah. What are some of the temptations that we can struggle with as women? Anybody? Insecurity. Insecurity? That's a temptation? Wow, everybody said insecurity. Okay. Anything else? Vanity. Vanity, doubt. Selfish ambition. Selfish ambition. How about doubting God's promises? Yeah. Right? How about envy? Yeah. Right? How about greed? Yeah. These are all temptations, right? Well, these are sins, but we can be tempted with these sins. Wanting more for ourselves or not wanting to give ourselves more. Not wanting to give more to God or give more to each other. And I do want to share a story with you guys. Because, you know, you guys know a lot of my sin because I share it freely. But once upon a time, long, long ago, as a Christian, uh, I dated a brother in the church. This is before I was married to Joey, before I even knew Joey, okay? I dated, I dated a brother in the church, and I actually ended up, we got engaged. So I was engaged as a disciple before my now husband. And I remember I was so excited. I would like, I was picturing my white dress. I was like, man, I'm gonna have kids young because I, I've always wanted to have kids. I remember I was like 15 and I wanted to be a mom. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to have kids young and I was so excited that God was making all my dreams come true, yeah. right? And it was so special to me because it was as a disciple as a true Christian, right? It was God's way. And for it was one of the hardest things when I found out that that brother was living a double life. He was not living as a true Christian. I remember breaking off the engagement a couple months before the wedding. And I was so tempted to be angry with God. To be angry at God allowing me to have this good thing just to take it away from me. I remember thinking things like, this should not happen in the kingdom. This shouldn't happen in the church. This happens elsewhere. I was very young, by the way. I was maybe two years, two years as a, as a real Christian. And uh, I questioned the goodness of God. And I really wondered, why would God do this to me? It felt like God like dangled something in front of my face mm -hmm. and just took it away. Mm -hmm. It was a very hard time. Mm -hmm. I remember being tempted to be angry and envious mm -hmm. when I would see other sisters who had boyfriends mm -hmm. <laughs> who ended up actually getting married. Yeah. And I, I think that, that <laughs> Come on. Come on, I think that God. <laughs> set up this perfect storm in my life because all of my roommates at that time ended up getting engaged wow. and getting married yeah. and I was the only one who did not and my vision was so clouded at this time right for the first time I genuinely was angry with God but I gave into the temptation and I questioned God I got angry at God I got angry at the people involved I stopped being open and I became resentful. I was embarrassed and I let my embarrassment take a hold of me. I remember crying and praying on my knees every single night, sometimes angry, just telling God, you know, my two cents. Uh, and I, you know, I did this for months. It, it was about two or three months that I was doing this. And at some point I remember thinking, wow, like what happened? To my gratitude yeah. like what happened to my joy and uh, like what what God had first given me was not a boyfriend yeah. what God had first given me was not a fiance yeah. he didn't promise me those things what God had given me was Jesus yeah. what God had given me was salvation yeah. and I completely lost sight of that 
because of this one thing that I really wanted that God did not give me or that I thought he was going to give me and then took it away. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, in that moment, I remember I, I like, it felt like I was listening to the lies of Satan. You know, when you go there, when you're just like, you don't know, (laughs) you don't know how deep down the rabbit hole you're going until you just feel ugly. Like you just feel gross about yourself. You feel like, I don't know where I'm headed right now, but I know it's not good. Yeah. And so I started hiding. Uh, I didn't want to talk to my discipler. I didn't want to talk to my mentor. Um, and I, and I felt, uh, again, I, w- I was just talking to the snake. Wonders. And notice that here, after Adam and Eve sin, after they give in, they start to hide from God. Right. And that's exactly what I did. And so I, I want us to see that when we talk to the snake, we tend to hide from God. Mm. And Come sisters, on. I want to ask you tonight, mm. is there anything that you are hiding? Is there anything that you are hiding tonight? I want to challenge you. Be open. Be open, not just about your sin. Be open on a temptation level. What if Eve would have gotten advice before she listened to the snake? What if she would have gotten open? before listening to the snake what if she would have just double checked with god because he's the one who gave the direction to begin with yeah now it doesn't end there i want to look at another person who was tempted but had a different outcome let's go to matthew chapter four let's go in Matthew 4, we see that temptation doesn't end in the beginning. And, you know, like we can become Christians and we think everything's going to be great and God's going to solve our problems and life is going to be flowers and rainbows and butterflies. Right? We, we can think like that sometimes. We can, we can have great dreams. And then when our dreams are crushed, then we can question why God. And we can be tempted. Now I will say, temptation is not a bad thing. The bad thing is what we do when we are tempted. Right? It's it's if we give in to the temptation. Let's look at Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11. It says, Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry i mean i would be too the tempter came to him and said if you are the son of god tell these stones to become bread jesus answered it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of god Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, right. sir, <laughs> Come on. do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Wow. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, mm-hmm. for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended him. And then I, wow, this is such a powerful scripture. I know many of us have read this several times, right? Maybe many times. Uh, And we see that Satan tempts Jesus. Now notice he was led there by the spirit, not by Satan. Uh, But yes, he was led there uh, by the Spirit for Satan to test him and to tempt him. And I want you to notice that the strategy that Satan used is the same that he used with Eve. He starts off with doubt. Mm. 
right? If you are the son of God, he tried to get Jesus to doubt who he was, his calling. But then he tries to misconstrue God's word by quoting scripture, by taking scripture out of context. And lastly, he tempts Jesus with everything he could gain, all the good that he could have. Isn't that what he did with Eve? He told her how good the yeah. fruit was and what she could gain yeah. with it. So help us out, Karen. So we see the same strategy he used with Eve. Yeah. The same thing that he used with Jesus. But unlike Eve, Jesus was triumphant through the temptation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But how was he triumphant? There was one huge difference. Is that Jesus knew the words right. of God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Point number two okay. is know what God says. Point number two, know what God says. Sisters, we have to know what God says. Yes. Yep. Knowing the Bible is knowing the truth yeah. in a world full of lies. Mm. A world full of lies. The world tells us that if we want to be happy, we need to be successful. Yeah. You need to be pretty. Yeah. You need to get a guy to like you. Come on, you need to be a trophy wife, oh. right? You need the family. You need to have kids. You need to live the American dream. You need to have the career. Yeah. All of these things are going to fill you. All of these things are going to make you happy. But how has that really worked out for the world? Yeah. Chasing these things. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, sis. I mean, I don't know, but I walk through UTA and I see that depression has never been so prevalent in our society as it is today. Anxiety, mental illness. That's for a lot of the youth. Divorce and abuse for the older generation, for a lot of our parents. Nowadays, the world teaches that in order for women to have true value, they need to be not equal, but they need to be the same as men. If not better. Yeah. Right, And there is a horrific competition and a putting down and an emasculating of men. Yeah. All of these lies that are put forth, that we are not good enough if we are not X, Y, and Z. If we don't fit this mold, then we are no good. But knowing the Bible is knowing the truth. Mm -hmm. And sisters, we've got to know the truth. Because the truth is that we will be tempted. Yeah. Yes. We will be tempted. And if we don't know the scriptures, we're going to end up like Eve, not like yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Karen. And I want us to see here, when did Satan go after Jesus? Okay, I hear a lot of you guys saying when he was hungry. Awesome. Absolutely, yes, he was hungry. And when he was tired. When he was hungry, when he was weak, I want you to see this was probably one of the most vulnerable times for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Satan attacks, Satan tempts us when we are in a very vulnerable state. Yeah. And we have to see that Satan does not play fair. Yeah. Right? He's not just like when you're doing great, like, oh, ha, ha, let me just sprinkle it. Like, no, it's when you're struggling yeah. that the temptations yes. are so yes. much harder. Yes. Yes. He attacks tired yes. it's when you're hungry yes. or should I say hangry yes. it's when you're weak but I dare to say it's when you're going through some of the darkest times of your life it's when you're going through hardship it's when you have relationship issues it's when you have heart problems right it's when your dreams are crushed that is when Satan comes to tempt you. Mm -hmm. It's when your roommate didn't wash her dishes again. Oh. 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 Me. Oh. It's when the interest isn't mutual. Oh. Oh. <laughs> or it's when the interest starts dating somebody else. Yeah. Oh. Right? Like, this is when yeah. Satan tempts you. Yeah. But the question is, are you giving in? Are you giving in to the temptation? I'll be honest, right now, I sense a tiredness in all of us. I say all of us, like, I, I'm not above it, you know? 
And I, I do think that a lot of us are tired, yeah. right? Why are we tired? We've been working hard. You know, we have the campaign. Some of us are moving. Some of us have been pouring ourselves out for people. But I think some of us have become tired or weak from watching people not make it, from watching people fall away, watching people leave God. Maybe you've had thoughts of falling away. Maybe you've had thoughts that it would be so much better if you just didn't have all these temptations or if you didn't have all these issues. Or if your life was just going in this perfect way or in the way that you had anticipated. Maybe you're having issues with your roommates, like I mentioned. Maybe you feel dull. Maybe you don't feel sharpened right now. Maybe you feel pressure from doing things that you've never done. Maybe you feel stretched. Maybe yeah. you're in a new stage of life, I can relate, new stage of life that you've never been in. Maybe you have hope deferred. Yes. But sisters, are you listening to the snake? Or do you know what God says? You know, there's a there's a good little quote, and I'm I'm not very good at quoting it, but I'll share it with you in the way that I can remember it. You know, we've had many um, mentors. I've been a a true Christian for almost 11 years. And we've had many mentors who have taught us many different things. But I will say that Tim and Leanne Kernan are probably, like, the best with analogies or, like, you know, just, like, painting the picture. I'm serious. Uh, I feel like Tim probably has like an illustration for anything, everything. He always has something like awesome to really just paint the picture of what he's trying to help you to understand. And I think I heard it from the Kernans, but I may have heard it from somebody else. I'm sure many people have told us this, but, and you guys have probably heard it too, but you know, um, there's an analogy of like, when you put a tea bag in hot water, like what comes out? Yeah. What's in the tea bag? Yeah. Right? Same thing when you put a disciple under pressure, what is it that comes out? When you go through hardship, what comes out? When you're struggling, what is it that comes out of you? Come on, Karen. Is it the words of God or is it the lies of Satan? You know, somebody that I really admire is my incredible, awesome husband. And I wrote him a little Valentine card yesterday because I, you know, I prayed. I really did pray. I'm serious. I prayed to be with somebody who I was, like, intimidated by. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm not, like, the easiest person to lead. You know what I mean? Just to be honest, like, I knew that I needed a strong person. (laughs) And uh, sisters, pray for for what you need, please. But I'm serious. When I met Joey, I was intimidated out of my mind. And not because he's, like, I do believe he's the most handsome person ever created. But (laughs) that's not why. I was so intimidated by his relationship with God. Seriously, like, this guy, every time I would talk to him, it was like, hey, please pray for this guy. We just did this Bible study. Like, hey, I just had this guy over at my house, and he's a really cool engineer, and we just finished his Bible study. It was like... All spiritual. It was there was no like, hey, how are you, sis? Like, what's your favorite color? There was none of that. Joey was just so spiritual, and uh, and I've always I've always admired his walk with God, his righteousness, and that's what I wrote to him in his in his um, Valentine card. But I, I think what I appreciate about Joey is that I'm going to be honest. I'm a woman, and I struggle so hard. When I think, like, the world is, like, falling, (laughs) I'm like, no, like, please, like, I can't handle anymore, and everything's going south, and everything's falling apart, and why can't, why is this person doing this, why am I doing this, right? And I can, like, you know, just be drama queen all day long. (laughs) But what I, what I appreciate about my husband is that when things are, like, literally, like, the pressure is beyond what he can bear, beyond what I can bear. Yeah. 
he clings and i mean like he holds on to the scriptures That's awesome. they're like i i've never admired anybody's walk with god as much as i admire my husband's walk with god and i love that he's constant he, there is no like up and down for Joey. I mean, a lot of you guys know him, you know, yeah. but there is no like up and down with him. He's literally just always like steady and kind, wow. steady and kind. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful for that yeah. because that that's the example that I want to follow. Yeah. I want to have the scriptures on my heart and in my mind. And when I'm struggling and when I'm going through the darkest of the darkest times, Come on, that scripture comes out. Yeah. Not anxiety, yeah. not depression, yeah. not a dark hole, yeah. not struggle fest, not, yeah. struggle not yeah. pointing yeah. the finger at my husband, yeah. not pointing the finger at my roommate, yeah. not pointing the finger at everybody and everything and why everything is going the way it's going. Yeah. I want to have scriptures come out of my heart. Yeah. Uh, we have, let me see how much time we have. <laughs> All right, let's just go there. Let's go to Proverbs oh, chapter two. Oh, where I was coming in for a close, but I mean, we have we have eight minutes, so Proverbs two. <laughs> Proverbs two, one to eleven. And Proverbs are great for gaining wisdom. Oh yeah. Right? Proverbs two, one to eleven. I'll read it quickly. Please catch it. It says, my son or my daughter, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. I love this because it's all about storing up God's commands within yeah. us. It's applying our heart to understanding. But I'll be honest, this takes commitment. Yeah. I, I love a scripture and this one I really wanted to read, but I'll, I'll just read it. You can write it down. Matthew 12, 34b to 35. It says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of yeah. a good man or woman mm -hmm. brings good things out of the good stored up in him or her and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him we see that whatever is stored up in our heart that's what's going to come out when a temptation comes right, yeah. whatever is in there whatever you are full of that is what you're going to exude. That's what you're going to give. That's what's going to come out when hardship comes. Sisters, I want to encourage you to be careful what you look at. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you read. And especially, sisters, be careful what you think about. Fill your heart with good things. And you will think good thoughts, speak good words, and bear good fruit. Yeah. You know, uh, I had a devotional maybe yesterday or today, uh, maybe the one yesterday. It says we cannot change our thought patterns on our own. We need to constantly be filling our heart with good things, yeah. the things of God, yeah. the scriptures, and God's love. Yeah. And sisters, I, I want you to think this through. Because it's so true. the Like, we are in the world, but we're not those of the world. Yeah, right. And the world is pulling us left and right without us even knowing. Right? Again, the things that we watch, the things that we talk about, the things that we hear, the things that we read online. Yeah. All of these things, if we're not careful, we can store them up mm -hmm. in yeah. our heart and in our mind. Mm -hmm. 
And then when temptation and hardship come, those are the things that's going to come out. Those are the things that we're going to think about or that we're going to cling to instead of the words of God. But as we got to see, Jesus was in a tough situation, and what came out of him was the word of God. Sisters, again, you can write it down. You can think about it. But what has been coming out of you lately? What is coming out of you today? Is it bitterness that comes out? Or is it forgiveness? Is it faithlessness? Or faithfulness? Is it numbing out? Or is it going to God in prayer and gratitude for your salvation? My challenge for you is to store the word of God in your heart. Read your Bible every day at the same time. Make a plan for your Bible study. If you're having trouble, <laughs> come on, sis. Ask your mentor. What do yes, they think you on. need to study out? What do oh, they sis. think you need to work on? In closing, I want to encourage you that we can be triumphant through temptation. But it's going to require for us to, one, not talk to the snake. Don't talk to the snake. And number two, to know what God says. I love you, ladies.